you know, this whole thing started in 71. And then in about 73, we signed with Alan Walden's management group, who was the brother of Phil Walden of Capricorn Records. He had Leonard Skinner when they came up. He had the Outlaws out of Tampa, who they, we signed together at the same time with them and played a bunch of uh, uh, showcases with them. This was stuff that happened really after Mark had left me. And, uh, and we had uh, Paul Hornsby, producer at Capricorn Records, oh, yeah. Paul who had played with you know, Greg and Dwayne in the early days and produced all those Marshall Tucker Band albums yeah. and things. He was really on our side. Took us in the studio at Muscle Shows a couple of times, did a bunch of demos, and he really tried to get us signed, but we just never could get signed, you know, for whatever reasons, and I know what some of them were. And <laughs> it wasn't because we didn't have the tunes. We had the tunes, <laughs> and I think we had the sound but maybe we just didn't quite have our act together enough, you know. I think a lot of it was we weren't really a, a, a southern rock band. That's true. We, we weren't like an almond. We, were we weren't a buddy yeah. band. We weren't a, That's you know, true. We, we were, were existing in a southern rock world, but we weren't a we southern We were more rock of a country band. rock thing, yeah. meaning like, you know, what country rock meant in circa 1970s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was, uh, that kind of held us back. And, and we weren't the most dynamic stage performers that ever lived, you know. We, we weren't really? Leap, we weren't <laughs> leaping about or, you know, making a show. We were just kind of playing our, playing our stuff. There were these time-like photos when we would open for the um, Atlanta Rhythm Section a few times. And everybody's sort of fuzzy a little bit. And I'm, I'm completely in focus. I'm just standing there. Because <laughs> you're not moving. I'm not even breathing. I'm not, you know. You're you know. no challenge for the camera. <laughs> yeah. But we gave. But I mean, it was supposed. To, they wanted some action shots, yeah, and it was yeah. like, oh, somebody go pump his chest, make him breathe a little bit. So. Yeah. And we gave it a good run. I mean, we had a lot of things <laughs> happening, but nothing just ever went all the way, you know. Right. Just never got, never got signed. And in those days, if you didn't get signed, well, you didn't make a record. Any, anybody can make a record now, but not then. Right. You know. So so how so so. How did the, the uh, band, in, in a nutshell, how did the band kind of dissipate? I mean, you all went your separate ways. Everybody just graduate and move on, or what? Uh, virtually nobody graduated. He did. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody right else Right after really I got out of the band. after my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it just kind of, Well, we, we did, had we, some member changes. Yeah, member you know. changes. Mm -hmm. and uh, we've been doing it a while, and I think after a while it was like, well, we're doing this thing. Things had not really changed musically by 75 very much, but I think uh, we just, five, it, was that, that, it was that about four or five year band time that usually happens, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. bands sort of split up. Yeah. I think we were all sick of, sick of how much we knew each other by then, <laughs> yeah. you know? The first person to bail was J.D. Harris, who was the lead singer who wrote a lot of tunes. He left at about the two-year mark, maybe just shy of the two-year mark. And went over to work with Buddy, at Buddy Bowie's place in Atlanta. He mm -hmm. was, yeah. Went over we, to pursue being a songwriter. Put out a record at 45, too. Yeah. And then Mark left the band yeah. and was replaced by Jim Liner. Mm -hmm. I, Excellent. I don't know if you ever knew Jim. Mm -hmm. met him, yeah. Great bass player. And uh, Jim's no longer with us mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And that was the next change. And then we added a keyboard guy who's on the record who we met down in Panama City. He was from the Gulf Coast. And he moved up to Montevallo and joined us. His name is Dave Miller. And then we added uh, Rick Bird on pedal steel guitar, who's also on the record. Yeah. And at this point, we're like a six-piece band. That's the biggest, <laughs> biggest, yeah. you know, uh, phase of the band we ever had. And, uh, and then uh, in 75, during the summer, Tom, the drummer, who had gotten married, decided he had to grow up and get a job, so he left. Don decided to leave then and go back to school. So the, the, the rest of us who were left, myself, Jim Liner, and Dave, and Rick Bird, we got another buddy of ours who had gone to school with us, Orville Kane, who has also passed away. We've lost a lot of people. Uh, came in and started drumming with us. And we carried on another year, but the band was really different the last year. Yeah, we were just yeah. much more of a cover band. And, real country, too. And, yeah, I, we went, moved in a real country. I used, I used to come here, I mean, they just really, I mean, they tore it up. But it's classic Well, you've always you know, wanted to explore really, that. I remember you saying that oh, all yeah, along. Yeah, and we had to do yeah. it to work because that was kind yeah. of the way things were going then. So it was, uh, 
it was five years total and really four years though of what I really considered dogwood mm -hmm. you know when, when Don and, and Tom left it, it was just a different thing mm -hmm. and I didn't even want to use the name that last year mm -hmm. but people talked me into it I right. wanted to call it something different you know right you didn't want to and that, you know, after further. that we got together for whatever we have yeah. a big crew of people we call Bonavallo Chill that kind of thing all yeah. not necessarily in the same class but they all were people that were around at that period the and, alternative crowd you know <laughs> and every few years we'll get together for something yeah. people who got it yeah, well, we, we'll yeah, yeah. We, were, we were at Montevallo in a really magic time mm -hmm. you know that was when there was a real distinct line drawn between the hippies and everybody else mm -hmm. remember and we were in the hippie yeah. crowd yeah. and so many people that went to school with us, even though we're talking about some people who graduated in 70 and other people who graduated in 76 or something, mm -hmm. just remained... Like best friends. Good Still. friends. And Still so, yeah, we've, yeah. We've, we've continued all through the years after we officially broke up to play for, you know, different functions that people would put on or sometimes just at a bar where one of us was doing a gig would mm -hmm. get together whoever we could and play. And then over the last few years, we've played uh, more than we've ever played since 1975. Mm -hmm. We've played uh, several, you know, four or five, three or four times a year for the last some couple fundraisers of years. And like benefits and, and some, you know, played at Daniel Day several times. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we just, uh, even though we broke up, we never... Call it totally quits. Talk about the project. Talk about the getting back together Talk and the project. project. Ooh. Here's the project. Well, it was your idea. <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> uh, so what's your favorite tune on the project? You got one? Mark, yeah. what's your favorite? <laughs> I'll tell you right now, Dakota Girl. Oh, really? Yeah. My, Dakota Girl. yeah, my favorite songs are Dakota Girl and yeah. Sunrise Told Me, yeah. which are the first two songs we recorded, and they're both... Songs to Don wrote. Yeah. Now, did we cut those at Tony's house? We those, started yeah. them at Tony's yeah. and finished them at work. Yeah. Really, what happened was with the project is that as far back as six or seven years ago, I, I called you and we talked a time or two about going into to Tony Wax's studio and just recording just a few songs. I wasn't thinking about making a record. I just wanted to. And so, you know, we got to demo most of this stuff in studios back in the old days. Most right. of these songs were cut in the studio and we had some pretty good demos but we never got to do it right you know so first you know like I said five or six seven years ago we talked a little bit about doing a project recording but we never followed up on it and then uh, about two years ago we played a Sunday afternoon at, at Daniel and Melody's place Daniel Day Gallery and uh, my brother my younger brother who was always part of our crowd who wrote it for us for a number mm -hmm. for quite a while lived with us he called me up and he said look you guys have got to do this and he really got on my rear end about it you know so it's I got serious to blame right yes <laughs> serious to blame. I got serious about it and it didn't take much you know talking and so we just decided why not yeah you know? I mean to kind of did it well, I think it's it's amazingly good so did, were you were you surprised by the quality ever you kind of like no this is what I expect no not at all I, you know, I knew we could make a really good record mm -hmm. because we've got some really good songs. Yeah. You know, that's what you got to start with. Don's a great songwriter. Mm -hmm. You know, I can write one every now and then that's mm -hmm. okay. He's, no, he can, he can write one every once in a while that makes him some money. <laughs> <laughs> well, that happened once. <laughs> that's a different story. But uh, because we had good songs, you know, there was no doubt we could make a good record. Just getting in there and doing it. So when we, we started this project... Uh, I'm the date guy. I, re I remember chronologically. Mm. That's my mm. thing. He remembers more stuff than I do, but I can mm. tell you when everything happened. <laughs> uh, we started, we had the first recording session uh, October 2016. What year? <laughs> 16. And, uh, yeah, we started off recording at Tony Wachter's home studio. Yeah. But Tony also runs the studio at Workplay. Right. Tony's place is great, but it was, it's hard to get in and out of, so right. we finally just moved it over to work play, and Tom Williams was great to us, and <laughs> kind of let us record, you know, on spec, you know, we'll pay it later, yeah. and, and we did, uh, so uh, some people helped us out along the way, and uh, 
it took us a while to make the record, you know, uh, about six months of recording, but we'd have long gaps in between sessions mm -hmm. sometimes, you know. Right. But, uh, and we actually, there's 13 songs on the record, which is a lot. We recorded two more, but we ended up not using them. You know? The flow wasn't right. Right. Yeah, so it's <clears throat> even with cutting those two two tunes, it's uh, it's still a long record. You get your money's worth. Ten I bucks. I did. I, 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 I felt complete when I listened to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. The, the, uh, Dakota, <laughs> the Dakota girl. Uh, or was that just the short answer? The, the short answer is yes, but she doesn't live in Dakota. <laughs> you said the phonics. Uh, she Dakota. lived. She lived in Calera, but. It's easier to me to say. Girl. See, the, yeah. but the, if it was if it was too close to home, it, I would put it in Alaska or I put it in Minnesota. You know, it's, it's more exotic. Montevallo Turnpike. Oh yeah, which well, is yeah, Highway so, 25 through Wilton. You know, there you if, go. if you look at book. the song titles, I mean, there's definitely sort of a thing. Can you read them and comment on each one? Or are are y'all? Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. No, just like uh, uh, shortly. Okay, the first song is. The Dogwood Slide, which is the first thing we ever kind of wrote as a group. Mm -hmm. just That's the one that has the word funky in it. Yeah, it's right. just a yeah. riff song. Yeah. He started playing this funky guitar riff. And everybody and started. Rody Coop started dancing to it, and it was the silliest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and our lyricist guy, yeah. J.D. Harris, started yeah. writing some crazy lyrics, and we, we, it ended up like it. Is. It's a funny little... I like it. Well, it's our opening song most of the time. Yeah, and Don well. Don co uh, rewrote the lyrics for the record. We, we turned it into something a little bit more different. of a story. He was doing yeah. a little bit of a story. Made a little story out of it. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, Dakota Girl, second. Tell them about it. I, it was, you know, I used to go to Clear Armory a lot when I was too young to go in there, really, you know. Yeah. And go hear bands and dance and stuff. And all my friends, especially my friends that were girls were a couple of years older, so I was paying a lot of attention to it. Yeah, you know? no air conditioning there. And no air conditioning, yeah, and it was not a bad thing though. That's no, what I'm saying. You yeah. know, yeah. and uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, I would hear the, the the teenage human drama from the barely being a teenager kind of thing, and yeah. I would hear these stories about stuff, and someone became friends and stuff. So I was just, I guess that was me rehashing it without actually having to get real specific about yeah. who I was talking about. Yeah, being, uh, a couple of years later, it's like, oh, I know this story. You know? <laughs> and the third song is Athens Train, once again, a place in the title. But Athens, it was out of the state, so it was okay. Yeah, yeah. Could, Don started writing that one. Uh, we were playing at the BNL Warehouse in Athens, Georgia. Train warehouse. That's a train <laughs> track yeah. that ran behind the building, and just, it, it seems like on a break in, but in yeah. between sets, yeah. it just started coming up with this cool idea. Club. For this song, yeah, that was a, really one of our favorite places we used to play back then. The old wooden, you know, the yeah. bar that went all the way. I think the building, the structure is still there. Yeah. And, and in fact, a, a guy that uh, had told, was talking about Athens, and I, I, I would be in the back room, I don't drink or anything. We played air hockey when it first came out, and we'd all have bruised fingers from holding the thing wrong. <laughs> so I couldn't do that in play, so I would just sit around the back and read some science fiction on the breaks. And, um, Write graffiti in the dust on the windows, okay? <laughs> so this is like, you know, 30 years later, I'm I played at the uh, 40 Watt Club, okay? And uh, 20 years later. And uh, the guy said, no, oh, used to play here. I was going, yeah, but not here up, up the hill. At the B&L Warehouse. Where's your band, Dogwood? Dogwood is still written down the windows on that place. <laughs> it's like they, they never clean that place, yeah. man. Was, 20 years. All the, all the yeah. graffiti is still back there. Yeah. <laughs> The fourth song is a prairie song, uh -huh. which Don wrote, and it's a straight up acoustic song. It's just him and I on the record, him playing acoustic guitar, me singing a little harmony with him, and I played a solo on an <laughs> instrument called the humanitone, the little whistling thing you hear on the record. Oh, yeah, it's actually this weird little plastic thing that fits over your nose and mouth, and you Blow through your nose and shake. Nose flute, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a nose flute. That's yeah, yeah. Exactly well, a nose flute actually can. It's a little bit different than a well, nose well, flute. It's like a, we yeah. call it a snoot flute. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's you can call it a manitone. Okay. And I've still got that's the, only the one I played on the record. Okay, right, I'll fall out right beside the knock arena. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one I played on this record is the same one I played on the demo in 1974. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little piece of plastic this yeah, big yeah. that I've somehow managed. He had that recalibrated. Hold on to yeah, recal. <laughs> <laughs> the next song is, once again, a play song. It's called Georgia Bar, and it's one that I wrote. It's probably the most 
commercial country rock song on the album. Yeah. And it's... Was it about playing at the b &L? Well, I wrote it. I started yeah. writing it when we were playing the b and Warehouse. We and played it's, there a lot. It's, the, it's our road song. You know, woe is me. I'm on the road. I'm mm -hmm. not home with yeah. my girlfriend. You know. That song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's that one. The next song is another place song called Back in Juneau, which is one of Don's. Back in Clanton. Yeah. We had, a, we, had a, we had a river house at the, at, the, at the river down there. It was easier to write. And make the, first line, the first line is, we argued at the river camp. And it's, <laughs> True story. And so he would. It actually happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the stuff actually happened. When tell them right. about home. Don wrote it, but tell them about You tell it. Home. Oh, it's probably the most grooving song for me. You know, yeah. I love playing it's bass kind of a, on that. It's thing. almost a blues shuffle. Yeah, it's like yeah. a, a, a blues shuffle. Stuff. It's a lot of good walking bass and stuff like that. I love yeah. playing that. I'm always. It's it's kind of a. It developed over the years. When I was first in the band, we did it. Didn't have the bridge. Yeah, I, Don I, wrote a bridge. I, I, I after dreamed. The band I, I dreamed. It's like yeah. ten years later. I dreamed the bridge. Com music, yeah. everything. Woke up and it was yeah. like, oh, and got the boom box out, and I better put this down for our, yeah. while I remember it. And yeah. plugged in perfect. So it's the it's yeah. if you go back and listen to our old demos, it's the most different one because it's got an old section added that wasn't there originally. Yeah. You know? We get together. I remember one time we first got together. We we're going to do home. And I started playing, and all of a sudden they went to this different spot. I didn't know. They probably didn't know I didn't play on the new one. E! Yeah. <laughs> what do I do? So, yeah. yeah, it was cool. The next song is uh, one of Don's called Sunrise Told Me, which is my favorite, along with the Code Girl, which is the most rocking oh, yeah, song for sure. on yeah, the record. Yeah. It's, it's the one that's got the bluesy harp, harp in, there, right? in it, which is Dave, our Kent, uh, keyboard guy. Okay. He plays harp too. And it's it's a song that to me that's kind of a to me it sounds like a the Jefferson Airplane mixed the Yardbirds kind of you know well but they were influential for me mm -hmm. you know and it really rocks we both got to really cut loose on guitar mm -hmm. on that one and uh, it's really fun to play live and it's, it's loud real, it's got a real uh, <laughs> tricky little ending that's yeah. You're, you're riding down the road at 100 miles an hour, and then do this lick and it stops. You know, yeah, it's, it's like, got yeah, one of the most right. unique ends that you, you could ever tag on. We get it more yeah, often than not. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next song is a Highway Sign, mm -hmm. which is one that was group written. Mm -hmm. uh, J.D. Harris, the original mm -hmm. singer guy, had written this, pretty much written a set of lyrics. Just the way I remember it anyway. And, and we just kind of all contributed to putting mm -hmm. music. Sometimes they would, I would, I lived in my grandparents' house at the time. I was living down in their basement going to college, and uh, every once in a while I'd get a phone call over there. We got something, we got something, come on out. <laughs> yeah. So I'd, you yeah. know, I'd get out there and, oh, it sounds pretty good, guys. <laughs> so that was a G right here. And it's a real, <laughs> it's a kind of a straight up, yeah. it's a straight up rocker. It's got a little bit, eh, I wouldn't say it sounds like the Stones, but it's got a little bit of the Stones yeah. kind of groove to it. As a matter of fact, I added some G-Tune guitar to it that we had never used before on the record. I love it. I love makes that. It yeah. gives us a little yeah. more than yeah. Stones kind yeah. of Did you play that on the Barrett? Oh, the Barrett on that? Yeah. No. Okay. no, no, no. Yeah. And then the next song is one of the two straight up acoustic songs, Minnesota Turnpike, another place song, which Don wrote real early on. I wrote that, I think, before. He had already yeah. written that when yeah. we started the band. I didn't realize it was so geographically based until you started writing That's it. my favorite. Oh, well, there's, there's some, some other much like more. Tour, yeah. like and and yeah. on the record, it's it's just Don playing mm -hmm. acoustic guitar and singing, and I sing harmony on like two lines. And, mm -hmm. right. and so it's real, real stripped down. The next song is uh, one of Don's called It Was Easy, and it is a, it's it's really a country rock song, mm -hmm. very country groove. It's got a little halftime thing that goes to the bridge and then it goes back to, you know. Uh, and it's a really fun one. I got to sing a lot of really fun backup vocals on that one, did all the backup stuff, and it was really fun. And I didn't Bird use the girl's real name in it, I used her middle name. So, yeah. so yeah. That one really features, that one, yes. along with several others, really featured Rick Bird on yeah. the pedestal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was a great right. musician. Rick's a great player. And then the, the last two songs are the only ones that are not from the old days. Uh, this next to the last one, Spring Creek Road, Don wrote some years ago. In the 90s, when I moved yeah. to Spring Creek, it was like I was sort of 
convincing myself it was okay to move back towards the country, you know, just <laughs> in case, right. just in case. And we started. I was trying to convince yeah. myself it wasn't going to go. Self talk. Yeah. It's a Montevallo street. You know? We started doing that one on stage without ever having him heard it. One night we were playing a gig Three a few years ago, and he said. G, E minor, C, and D, yeah. over and over and over again. There's not it's a just, D in it. Yeah. It's just, well, that's right. That's right. It's just the three chords. Yeah. I thought it was Four. sounding funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we just started playing it, and it made its way onto the record. And it's one of my favorites. I like it a lot. And then this last song, The Dog Would Ride, the first song is The Dog Would Slide. This is one that I wrote specifically for the record, and it's my take on the history of it's it, sort it of broken. about the band, and it's sort of about the living in the house experience, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's a, and, and I played everything on it. Yeah. Nobody else is on it yeah. but me. Played some bass and played some acoustic guitar yeah, and some electric guitar. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was me. It was me uh, having fun. Well, he had this great new acoustic guitar, and he just started playing bass. Yeah, so it was like, yeah. Oh. yeah. But it, I think it broke your dry spell, too. How... how yeah. Long between songs between that one and the one you'd written previously? Uh, it had been at least 25 years since I <laughs> finished written a song from beginning to end. Because I never did write much. It was, it was hard for me. I don't, I don't really have that songwriter's thing. I, every now and then I could spin out something okay, but it, it You really got to play a music just to get women. Right? Oh, totally. Like everyone. Like everyone like that quit working about. 25 years ago. Then you discover what kind of musician you really were. But I am, I'm proud of the song because it really, I think it tells the story of the, the living in the house and the band. Yeah, it's pretty cool good. Song. When I wrote it, I, I literally, I came up with the idea and the, the melody and I sat down and started just jotting stuff down from, from the past. There you and go. just started trying to work some of it into yeah. the song. Don, Don gave me a suggestion or two, and I think I took one of them. out the window. I no, I took <laughs> one of them. I used one of them. And so that's uh, that's the 13 songs of the dog. Without. True. Sure.